All right, how's it going everybody? My name is Chris DeMarco with Coastal Carolina Consulting. First off, I'd like to just thank the Board of Directors of Clearwater Paper for taking their time today to come here and listen to what we have to say. We hope that um, you know some of our recommendations are of some value to you guys. And uh, so without further ado, I'd just like to welcome Chris Bundy over here and he's going to talk to you about the areas of operation of Clearwater Paper. Thank you. Clearwater Paper produces private label and consumer paper products. The major products of the company are paper towels, tissues, napkins, and paperboard. Uh, the company is split into two segments, which is the consumer products and the pulp and paperboard. In 2010, they acquired Cellu Tissue Holdings for manufacturing and converting their own tissue. And in the wood pulp production, they're currently semi-vertically integrated producing about 25% of their wood pulp. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the pr present strategic profile. Uh, the corporate strategy is related diversification corporate strategy because more than 70% of their business comes from one industry, which is the tissue industry. And uh, for the business strategy, everything that they do is low cost. They have programs designed to cut back on all different costs throughout the company and all of their functional activities all support the low cost strategy. Uh, and when in international markets, their strategy is at home replication international strategy and this is because every new international market that they enter, they use their same strategy that they developed at home in the US and that's how they enter new markets internationally. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the performance appraisal. Uh, Clearwater shows consistency in revenue, expenses, and net income in all different parts of their financial statements. Currently they're a top player in the private label industry and pulp and paperboard industry in the U.S. Uh, in 2014 they diverted assets causing them to have a net loss, but that was their first net loss. And overall from the internal analysis, it shows that the company is executing their low-cost strategy successfully. Hi, I'm Jumia, and I'll be discussing uh, the leadership and governance for Clearwater Paper Corporation. Um, our top management and board of director um, is Linda Massiman. She's the president and CEO. There are seven members total. Um, and then this is go over the vision of the company right fast. Our vision is to be indispensable to the customers, sustainable to the world, responsible to our employees and communities, value creators for our investors, and to make a difference. And a quick slogan that they made up, you know, just to go through that real quick, is drive. Um, D, develop, engage, and protect our people. R, realize, grow, and enhance financial performance. I, improve, promote efficient processes. Value, uh, deepen relationships with our customers and ensure sustain the future of our company. And um, I know Aries operation was already covered, but I'm um, just going to go through it right quick. We have three subsidiaries um, in the U.S. and Canada, eight located in Delaware alone. Um, and essential challenges, um, I have listed three. Um, my outside in, in institutions um, with four people taking up more than 34.5% of ownership level of diversity, which seems to be the most challenging for Clearwater Papers and long lasting relationships, um, mostly depending on a small number of, of companies overall. And performance assessment, um, we've been ranked top 10 bleached paper pour makers in, U in the U.S., um, top private label of tissue products in the U.S., and our stock price, um, it's never been less than $60 um, per stock, and um, at high, it was $75.67 at the most. Hi, how you doing? My name is Ryan Voorhees, and I'm going to talk to you about some of the key success factors. Um, they include product attributes, uh, competencies, competitive ca capabilities, and market achievements. This industry has proven that they have the ability to improve their production processes through the use of advanced paperboard mills, meeting many specifications to meet clients' packaging requirements, strategically placing the facilities is vital, and then keeping the production costs down is the major priority in, in this industry. 
Um, some of the close competitors um, would include Rock Ten Co. and Sunoco Co. Um, both these or both these businesses are well established, and they both had a steady growth rate. Um, Rock Ten, for example, from the years 2010 to 2014, they had uh, an equity uh, jump from one billion to 4.5 billion, which, compared to other competitors in the industry, is quite remarkable. Um, most of that success that Rock Ten had, uh, that can be accredited to uh, the growth in the business in other countries. Um, that include Mexico, Puerto Rico, Argentina, Canada is one of them, um, and they're still building other uh, plants and businesses around the globe right now. Um, and as far as Sunoco goes, uh, they continue to go grow through the subsidiaries and, and they purchase lots of land and they're building more locations for them to operate. Um, now getting to the five forces analysis, this is like probably the most crucial part that I'm going to be talking to you about. Um, Clearwater Paper Corporation, they operate in both paperboard mills industry and the sanitary paper product manufacturing industry. Um, and there's about only 10 main competitors that would be considered actual rivals. Um, Clearwater, they have a 12% market share and uh, compared to a lot of their competitors, that really isn't a lot. Um, one of those competitors, International Papers, owns 24% of the market share, and they've been steadily growing, so, I mean, they have a lot to catch up to, but 12% um, market share is actually, it would be considered a decent amount compared to the other eight competitors. Um, the threat of new entrants is low because it's a cost, the, met, the amount of investments that you have to go through to build one of these plants it's like three hundred million dollars, something crazy like that. It's um so entry is entry levels low, uh, and the substitute products. Um, there's not a whole lot of substitute products, but there are a lot of substitute materials. So if the cost of wood goes up, um, these businesses, these industries, they could be looking to go in a different direction with different materials like cotton, uh, hemp bamboo, things like that. So no, they don't have any products that would necessarily replace some of the things that Clearwater is putting out there. But like I said, if the price of wood goes up, um, there could be uh, a couple products created out of different materials that may replace the products that Clearwater produces. Um, as far as the bargaining power and supplies is, uh, they are both dependent solely on the regulation because um, a lot of these, when they're cutting down all these trees and the, going through the deforestation process, a lot, of, a lot of state laws and national laws come into play and um, a lot of regulations could either hinder them or excel them, make them get either have a better price or lower price. It, it all kind of fluctuates. Um, as the years go by with different states and whatnot. Uh, the buy, the moderate, they have moderate buyer power because they need more retails to sell to, more retail stores to sell to. Um, they have three main retail stores and honestly that's not enough. A lot of the competitors that they're going up against have five or six uh, main retail stores that they're selling to. So as of right now, they're not weak, they don't have weak buyer power, but they definitely have room for improvement there. And uh, the last thing I'm going to be talking to you about is the pestle analysis. Um, this is really pretty much, it just shows, uh, showed that they had a fluctuating price of pulp, natural gas, chemicals, and many other random resources. Um, electronic communication will also continue to decrease demand for paper products and environmental laws will continue to place restrictions on the industry. And that's all I have to say, all I have to, say to you. I'm going to pass this over to Shane. My name is Shane Kilduff, and I'll be talking about the critical issues of Clearwater Paper. As you can tell from uh, the earlier parts of the presentation, they're a very successful company, but of course, like any other business, they have areas where they can improve upon. Um, most of their issues are revolved around the fact that they are not completely integrated. And uh, here are a few of the key issues that they must address over the next five years. 
The first is that the raw materials are purchased through external buyers. Uh, the second issue is that shipping products is done through external shipping companies. And the third issue is that they have a limited amount of suppliers, which lessens their buying power. So um, for the first issue that they uh, purchase the raw materials from external suppliers, my recommendation is that um, they start to produce their own wood and pulp, which is the material they need to make their paper products. Um, obviously, this is going to be a little bit of a slow process. It's not just going to happen overnight. So while they're starting to produce their own raw materials, they will still have to purchase from uh, the suppliers. But gradually over time, they'll start to purchase less externally and internally they'll produce more and that will uh, hopefully save some money. Um, for the second issue of shipping uh, externally, uh, what they could do is vertically integrate the entire manufacturing and shipping process, which would uh, allow them to ship their own products. But like uh, manufacturing their own raw materials, you know, this is going to take some time. So they're going to have to build up equipment such as uh, tractor trailers, loading docks, things of that nature. And then also build up their employees, which would be drivers, uh, people who load the trucks, all that kind of thing. And um, pretty much over time, gradually once they, uh, they uh, ship externally less, they'll be able to retain more business rather than outsource it and uh, get a nice competitive advantage from that. Um, and then for the third issue, uh, about how they have uh, limited uh, suppliers to buy from, my recommendation is to allow other companies to bid on their purchase orders. So uh, pretty much what that means is that they have a good supplier relationship right now, but they're kind of limited. They don't have much power in uh, what they can buy and the price. So what doing what making bids would do would give them a little bit more leverage, give them more options of who to buy from, what uh, the best deal is, who gives the best quality, things like that. And um, you know, it also gives them uh, some new business partners, possibly networking, gets their name out there further and uh, expands their scope of business a little bit. And uh, also at the end of the day, that would leave no hard feelings and uh, the relationships could stay intact because uh, you know, it's, it's a business decision for Clearwater and they have to do what's best for them and other companies should understand that. Well, that's uh, pretty much what we have to say. That's our analysis of Clearwater paper. Uh, we hope that what we said was useful and hopefully uh, you enjoy what we had to say. Thank you.